the damage rule of crokinole. And you may be thinking, what on earth is the damage rule of crokinole? Is that when someone gets mad enough to flip the board? No, actually, it's a lot more civilized than that. Let's take a look. Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Crokinole Boards, and today in this video, we are going to answer some very specific questions that we have seen regarding the damage rule. If you find this helpful, please give us a like, a comment, a subscribe, and if you have any questions that are crokinole related, please drop them in the comment box down below. Let's start by looking at the damage rule as it is written in the official NCA rulebook. If a disc touches or crosses the outer boundary line, strikes the backboard or any out of play discs, then re-enters the playing surface, the disc is out of play, but the altered position of any disc struck shall remain and any 20s made shall count, except for the out of play disc. Let's keep it simple. We are talking about situations where your button or puck or checker or playing piece or cookie or biscuit or whatever you like to call it leaves the playing area, hits the rail or out of play buttons and then re-enters the playing area. Let's refer to this as the damaged disc. No matter what happens after that button leaves and comes back in, that damaged disc will not count in scoring. Even if it falls right into the center hole, it just gets removed, placed in the gutter, and does not count at the end of the round. However, any damage that that re-entering button creates will absolutely stay and count. If you play the great game of Crokinole long enough, I guarantee you will see a situation when that damage button will come back in and it will cause a 20, either for you or your opponent. It will knock a disc that's in play into that center hole that counts, damage stays. You will see situations where that re-entered button will prevent a button that was about to fall into a 20. It will prevent that from happening. That damage counts, it's where the buttons end up. You will see situations where the damage that comes back in will cause a button to set up you or your opponent for a perfect gimme 20 on your next shot. That damage stays. You'll see situations where it will take that away or it will knock a button from a lower scoring region up into a higher scoring region lower to higher, all those things, and the damage that happens will stay. It will count. It could even impact the scoring at the very end of the round. Doesn't matter. Damage stays. The more specific questions that we have seen about the damage rule is how it impacts the valid shot rule. As you know, when you shoot, if your opponent has any buttons on the board in play, then during your shot, either your shooter or one of your other buttons in play must make contact with an opponent's button. But if it is your damage button that is re-entering the playing surface that contacts your opponent's button, that does not make the shot valid. If the, if the contact happened before the button leaves, then it makes your shot valid. But if it's the only the damaged re-entering button that connects with your opponent's button, that doesn't make the shot valid. Okay, Ken, we are aligned for re-entry. If, however, your re-entered disc causes contact between one of your buttons and an opponent's button, that does make it valid. Whether it bumps one of yours into the opponent's or it bumps your opponent's button into yours, if that contact happens between in-play discs, even if it was caused by a damaged button, if that happens with in-play discs, then the shot counts as valid and only the damaged button would be removed from the board. The other very specific question we've seen about damage in relation to the valid shot rule is in the situation where there are no opponent's buttons on the board. So as you know, when there's no opponent's button on the board, either your shooter or one that you make contact with needs to end up within that 15 circle at the very least touching the line. Now the question that we saw is, what if the damaged button interferes with a button that was going to get to the 15 circle? And my first answer is it doesn't matter, it's where it ends up. It's the same as when you have an open board, if you shoot all the way through the center and go out the other side, it's still not a valid shot and needs to be removed because it didn't end up in the middle. 
So if damage was to happen, it doesn't matter that your button was going to go in the center. It doesn't even matter if it went in the center into that 15 circle and then the damage button knocked it back out. That doesn't matter. All that matters is where it ends up. My second answer to this question is that if there are no opponent's buttons on the board, no one should ever shoot hard enough that damage will ever happen. I'm, I'm not sure how that scenario could even set up. Now, a couple more thoughts on the damage rule. One is, why does it exist? Now, this is just my opinion, but I believe that the damage rule exists because if you and I are sitting across from each other, we could argue about where things were, or we could argue about where things were going to end up had the damage not interfered in play. But we can't really argue about where things end up. If a white button ends up there, that's where it is. There's nothing to there's nothing to debate. But if a if a black button had hit it here, we could say, oh well it was going to end up here. There's cause for debate. This just makes it more cut and dry. Now the other thing about the damage rule is that this is, as far as I know, this is a bit of an unwritten rule amongst, it's just an understanding amongst the players that you do not try to run any interference on damage. So if a button is coming back in, you don't try to knock it away and prevent damage. Even if it's in play and it's spinning around, you don't try to quick grab it. You just let things happen and then allow the damage rule to impact the game. Part of the reason for that is just to let things happen as they were supposed to happen. But the other thing is if you go to grab it and then you knock that button and after you've hit the button with your hand out here, if damage happens then it gets really messy and hard to and hard to know what the official ruling is in that case. So just keep your hands back, let the chips fall where they may, and then make your ruling based on the valid shot rule and the damage rule as it applies. The other benefit of having this damage rule keep things cut and dry is that we never hopefully see someone get mad enough to actually flip a board. There's also the question is, is someone allowed to intentionally cause damage to happen. Now as long as you're doing it with a shot, I have absolutely seen this a number of times. It's more of a Hail Mary at the end of a round when you know the only way possible is for a massive fluke, uh, a circus shot to happen. I've absolutely seen players line up, blister a shot in hopes that damage will come back and knock one of their buttons back in toward the middle. Now I have never ever seen someone successfully attempt to intentionally use damage to win a round. But I've tried it and I'd encourage you to try it as well. At the end of a round, if there's nothing to lose, just go for it. So there you have it. That is, we really hope we've done an extremely thorough job of covering the damage rule and covered maybe not every scenario, but at least enough scenarios that you will know what ruling to go with no matter what situation sets up on your board. And if all else fails, then please refer to our other video about the Hutch Daddy principle. Just look at the situation, do what seems right and fair, and then you and your friends can get back to playing the greatest game on earth. Number one secret to success, you know what, no matter what happens, just stay calm. You just, you know, it's a mental game. Then you get out, right? You go, you start looking at the damage. You start looking, keep looking at each other, back at the damage. <laughs> will you please come and look at my damage with me, sir? If we look together, maybe some magic will happen. This is hor- feel this! This even feels damaged! This is horribly, this feels so horribly damaged. Even if I was blind, I would know this is horribly damaged by the way it feels.